So saturation masks are super useful. Um, MVP Action 7 is all about saturation masks. That's an older set of actions that we have that's still very, very useful. Um, but this one takes it to another level by making more accurate hue selections uh, when it comes to the saturation. How do we do that? With a chroma luma split, which is what Actions 12 is all about. So let's go ahead and run MVP chroma sat mask select. It'll let you know that, you know, you got to start from a either a flattened version of the image or, you know, stamped layer, background, whatever, hit continue. Now the end result is you have a selection. This selection is a saturation mask that was created from chroma directly and no luma information was used. So let's go ahead and choose like, um, oh, I don't know, vibrance. Okay, and let's look at our mask. Hold down Option or Alt, we look at the mask. It does look like a saturation mask if you're used to seeing them. What's brighter is in fact, you know, more saturated and what's darker is not saturated. But if you look carefully, you see that it looks almost blurry, like where's my detail? And that's because Luma has not been involved in this. How do we prove that? Well, let's go ahead and do it directly. Here we have the background layer by itself. I'm going to duplicate it. And this time, since we just ran HSB HSL, which is how we create a saturation mask, we're going to go ahead and run that. And then we'll go to channels and we choose green. There's our mask. And then we'll choose our vibrance. Turn off our HSBL. Okay, cool. Let's look at the different masks. Okay, let's, let's take a look here for a second. This is the one created with the Luma data in it. This is the one created without the Luma data in it. They are significantly different. Okay. For example, if we look at the one that we made, the outfit is darker. In other words, it doesn't have as much saturation because it doesn't have as much saturation. It's supposed to be a black outfit, right? But the one that we created without the Luma data extracted kind of confused Photoshop's saturation. It gave it a false positive that there's saturation here. There is color in there, but not so much that it got confused. Not so much that it will get confused when you extract it. So saturation masking yeah, this is still useful, this mask itself, but not nearly as useful as this one created just from Chroma. So let's prove that, okay? So let's go ahead and turn this off and go to our, this is the one we created, Vibrance. We're gonna turn up the Vibrance and Saturation quite a bit just for demo purposes, okay? So there it is with the normal sort of saturation mask creation, okay? So it's saturating the saturated areas very strongly. We have a lot of color being added to the neutrals, okay? So let's turn this one on. What was our settings? 50 and 35. We'll put these at 50 and 35. Now, off, on, off, on, and then the other one, on, off. It's going to be difficult to see on the video, I'll be honest with you, okay? But this one is far more accurate, leaving the neutral tones more alone, okay? We can really prove this by we're going to leave these masks in place so we can copy them. We're going to go to a solid color and we're going to add um, white. Why not? Hold down Alter Option. We're going to drag over the um, automatic mask that we created rather without the action. Okay, so you can see how much the white is covering. That's how much of the saturate areas are being affected, right? Duplicate that and we'll get rid of that mask, but we'll put in our good one. Okay, so now this is the mask, the saturation mask created just from the image as is. And this is the saturation mask created from just the chroma, smoother in every single way. So this is obviously a high chroma image, has a lot of different color ranges and all that. But if I were going to make a modification to the saturated areas or invert it for the opposite of that, I'd rather have this selection, which I feel is much more accurate than this one. Why is my black jacket have all this selection in it? I don't want that. I don't always want to boost saturation, right? Let's prove that. Let's say I want to add um, some, 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 some contrast. Okay, brightness and contrast. So I'm going to change that to luminosity blending mode just so I don't have any too much color shifting. And I'm going to do like a 50 brightness. I mean, excuse me, contrast. I'm going to drag in the saturation mask that we made for the, the image as is, duplicate, and then I'm going to drag in the one we made with the action. So here's the original one. Okay, this is the, the original saturation mask and I boosted the contrast on it, as you can see. And then here's the other one. Not affecting nearly as much of the deep shadows that I didn't want to affect. I want just the saturated areas. I don't want all these deep shadows. They're, they're not actually supposed to be that saturated. Okay. It's just getting a false positive with the chroma info. So once again, let's look at the chroma saturation mask and the full saturation mask. Well, I know which one is more representative of actual hue saturation and which one is not. And that's why this action exists. So. If you want to take that extra step to run an action before you select your, you know, saturation masking, this is the perfect way to do it by splitting chroma and luma, as is what action 12 does.